Okay, in this video, we are going to continue working on our student class and student runner. Right, so hopefully you've watched part one and have the data set up, the constructor set up. Right, and so here is our picture of it again, where we have the different instance variables, name, we're going to keep track of the student's name, their GPA, and how many dates they've gone on. We built some constructors. Right, and so what I'd like you to do next is try to make these four methods. Okay, so I didn't put the return type or any input parameters because I want you to try and figure that out on your own. But basically, the set GPA method would just uh, allow them, like, take in a GPA and set this to be whatever the GPA they send in. Um, get number of dates would just return how many dates they've gone on up until this point. Say hello would just um, just say a little greeting like, hello, my name is, and then say their name. Right, so that would be the say hello would do. So this one just do print out some message saying hello, and then go on date. Right, so if they actually went on a date, right? So again, these these objects can you can think of them representing real life students, real life people. So if they go on a date, how would that change our data? All right. So pause the video and try those, and then unpause to see the solution. Okay, so I'm going to do set GPA first. Okay, and that one is going to need in need a double coming in to change that variable. Okay, so if I do a set GPA, um, I'm going to do, so this is a, a set method. Sometimes it's called setter method. And it's going to be void because I don't need to return anything. I'm just going to do set GPA, and I'm going to do a double new GPA. All right, and then all I'm going to do is change my GPA variable. And again, because it's declared outside of any methods, I have access to it anywhere inside of this class. So I'm just going to set GPA to be the new GPA coming in. All right. Um, and so that'll allow us after they've constructed it. So I'm going to go back in my runner here. So if I make, um, remember John was kind of our default one. And so that would set the GPA to zero, I think, is what, what happened. But now I could actually change it. So once John completes freshman year or something, I could set the GPA to be his new GPA, right, whatever that is. Okay, so that allows us to change that, that data. Okay, so we did the set GPA. Get num dates is pretty straightforward. It just returns how many dates they've gone on. Okay, so it just returns, remember these variables are private, so if you want to access them, you need to make public methods, right? So they usually do a get and set method for all of these variables, but uh, I'm not necessarily going to do that just because, I don't know, they're all, they're all really similar. So um, I could show you a couple more maybe if you want, but basically, uh, maybe I'll do a get and set for numdates just to show you what it would look like. So in the student class, um, I can do public void set num dates. So that would just be an int uh, new num dates. And it'll be a lot like the last one. So I just set num dates to be the new number of dates, whatever they send into the method. Okay, and then a get, a getter method. So if I want to do get num dates, I just want to return this thing. So I'm going to do public, and it's an int variable, and then I'm going to do get num dates. Okay, and I don't need to pass in anything there because all I want to do is just return to them the num dates. And again, the whole point of that is since the variable is private, this would give them access to it. Okay, so if I go back into my runner, um, if I want to call how many dates Mac has done here, maybe. So Mac had six initially, so I could do um, Mac dot get num dates, right? And then I would usually want to store it or something, or just print it out. So maybe I'll just do I'll do it in two lines, I guess. Mac dates, right? So I'll make an int variable for how many dates he's went on, and then I can print it out, right? So I can print out how many dates he's gone on. Looks like six. Okay, so. We want to be able to simulate a student going on a date, right? So I think that was the next one was, oh, I said say hello, but I'll do go on date since I'm kind of on that path anyways. So basically all we'd want go on date to do would be to record that date. So that would make this num dates just go up by one, 
right? So um, nothing needs to come in, right? So in my student class, I'm going to make one that's called public and void, and then go on date. Okay, and so all I'm going to do there is plus plus num dates, right? So again, I'm changing this. Uh, let's see, this instance variable of num dates, and when they go on another date, I just want to increase it by one. All right, so then we can go back in our runner here and say Mac. Maybe I'll just yeah. I'm gonna delete this. Let's just make it simple. Let's just do the print of how many dates he's been on. This will just be simpler and clearer, maybe. Okay, so he had six dates originally, right? But then I can call Mac dot go on date. So he goes on another date. Right, and that'll change. Remember, so keep in mind that like there's two date numbers here, one for Mac and one for John. Right? So this will increase Mac's number, right? And so that goes back to this picture of like you have one class but many objects, and each one of these objects has its own number of dates. Right? So we can have Mac go on a date here, John's date number will stay the same. And then I can call this same line of printing out how many dates Mac has gone on. And that should be one more now, it should be seven. All right, so it's changing that data for the student Mac. All right, each student has their own set of data. Okay, um, so let's do then the say hello method. And uh, I'm going to make this one void again because it's just going to have some prints in it. All right, and we could pass in who we're saying hello to, but uh, we don't need to do make it that complex. We could if we want. Um, but basically, we're going to use their name. So we're going to say, say, hello. Hello, my name is plus name. And then we can be really forward here, maybe. We could say, since we want to increase our num dates, we could say, do you want to go on a date? Right, so we'll, we'll be very aggressive here with our student class. Okay, and so then you can have either, you know, anybody say hello, right? Once I make that method, either one of my student objects can say hello. So I'm going to see John put on here and have John say hello. And we can have Mac that say hello. All right. So there's John, there's Mac, and they say their names. All right. Um, yeah, just to show you, too, you can start to make as many as you want. So maybe in the student, this would be a good example of an overload, is I could make another say hello where they say hello to somebody. So I can do public void say hello to. Now I'll maybe let's make it say hello to, and I'll say string um, the person they are talking to. Right, so we can make it a little more personal greeting so they can say hello, whatever that person's name is. But we're still going to be aggressive here. We're still going to say, do you want to go on a date? Okay, so now we're not going to say their name. They're just going to say hello to that, that person. Okay, so then um, once I've created this, I can call it. Right with passed in. So again, we have two say hellos, but Java knows which one to run because if we put in a person here, it'll run this one. All right. So if I go back here, maybe I'm going to have Mac say hello to Sarah. Right. And so it'll run the other say hello method now. It'll say hello, Sarah. Do you want to go on a date? Okay. So you can start to see that um, you can make as many methods as you want, right? So here we can make a bunch of methods. Mostly they're going to interact with this data. You can pass stuff in just like regular methods. You can pass in things like we did with the say hello. Um, you can also have things returned like Mac, get num dates, return the number of dates, right? So they're sort of like regular methods, except you do the object name dot method name, right? So when you call them, like it's basically... I should put this on here. So you call call the method by doing object name. So whatever you name the object dot method name, and then any inputs. 
All right, so if you have any inputs, you would put them put them there. All right, so it's just like calling method before, except we we didn't do like the object name part. Right, so it's that's the only real real difference. Okay, final thing I want to show you is um, when you do just a regular print. So if I do a system out print of my Mac object, right by default, I think what happens is maybe we're gonna put some returns here just to space it out from all the other stuff that I've been printing out here. All right, so if you print out Mac just the object Mac, I think it just kind of prints like a sort of like a memory location. I'm honestly not really sure what that is, but it's just some like memory location or something like that. So if you wanted to, to actually display something different here, there's a special method met, method in Java called two string. And that will basically take whatever is here and turn it into a string. Okay, so like when you do int, like when you print out an int or whatever, or double, it turns it into a string kind of by default. So if you want to change this, you do something called two string, and it'll call that two string method automatically. Okay, so uh, what you got to do is go back into your student class, and it has to match exactly this this heading. So you type public method and do a string to re return this object as a string. So basically, you're going to say in our blueprint, right? If we want this object to become a string, what do we want that string to be? Okay, so I have to return a string here, and then I'm just going to put something like, like some default thing, like name, colon, plus their name, and then plus a space, maybe, and their GPA, plus their GPA variable, and maybe we'll do num dates too, we'll put all their information there, plus the num dates variable. Okay, so I'm just going to return that string. I'm not going to print it out, I'm just going to return it. Okay, so if you define a two string method like this, that's what will be called right here. Because printout wants a string, so it'll turn Mac into a string. So it had that weird default behavior too before where it made a like memory location, but now it'll print out Mac's information. Okay. And you could still call the two string in the normal way. So what I have written here would be exactly the same as if I called map dot two string, right? It would be exactly the same thing. So one more time, basically, if you just do system out print, maybe I'll do my other variable of John, right? John is a student, and so in our blueprint for student, we said if we want the student to become a string, this is the string we want it to become. Right, that's kind of the purpose of two strings. So it's sort of a very specialized method um, that runs anytime we want the thing to become a string. Okay, and that, that's kind of different than all the other methods we did, but I thought I'd bring it up here. Um, yeah, that's called two string method. Okay, that is it. Thank you for watching.